Hey there, it's Olivia Savannah here from Olivia's Catastrophe and today we're here to do a huge book haul because huge book hauls are the only kind of book hauls we tend to do on this channel. So this is my before my buying ban book haul. So you already have seen the fact that I am on a year long buying ban and this is the last book haul that has happened before I made that decision. So you won't be seeing any more purchased books in future book hauls for quite a while, but we have the last lot here. So without further ado, let's get right down to the books. So right before I went on my buying ban, I decided that I was going to treat myself to six books because I soon would be going home to the Netherlands. And I chose books that had US covers or books that I'd already read that had US covers, which I thought were nicer than UK ones because on this channel, we are shallow. First of all, the first book from that order was Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. I have read the Hate You Give and I've read On The Come Up and I loved both of them so she's got this third novel and I'm gonna read it. It's a prequel to The Hate You Give. I'm gonna read it and I decided I wanted to finally get the US cover for one of her books because I'm not a big fan of the UK ones and every single book of hers I've read so far has been a five star read so I'm all about getting into this one with the US cover on it. Because I was ordering from a Dutch website, my parents actually brought it over from the Netherlands to the UK for me, I decided it was time to get the Raven Cycle in Dutch. I'm hoping to reread this series in Dutch. I've already read the series in English and <laughs> hi, if you're new here, I'm Raven Cycle Trash. I love that series with my whole heart and I cannot wait to reread it in my second language. I ordered both The Raven Boys and The Dream Thieves in Dutch, but only The Dream Thieves has arrived so far. And in Dutch it's called The Droma Diva, but I don't know how many Dutch people watch my channel. I'm looking forward to rereading the series. I'm not even going to tell you what the series is about because I've talked about it so much endlessly on my channel, but when I give a wrap up of them, I will give a full synopsis. Another one that was a bit cheeky of me to get was an edition of a book that I really loved reading this year. If you did some book shopping at Independent Bookshop Week, which I'm going to tell you about later, and I did do some book shopping, if you spent £10 or over, you would get a £5 discount on your next purchase. So I got my £5 gift card and I went and got myself a discounted copy of Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I have a whole video of five reasons why you should read Vespertine by Margaret Rogerson. I read it back in January. I had a very good time. I've loved all of Margaret Rogerson's books that she's published so far because I have read them all and adored them all. And I really liked the US edition because the white edition that is the edition I was sent for review and it was free so I don't feel bad about buying myself a double copy in the US black edition that I really really like heads up if you're in the UK you can get this edition on Blackwells if that's something you're interested in and it's just gorgeous and it's gonna join my Margaret Rogerson collection of beautiful books that are beautiful insights too. Thank you so much to the publisher for sending me a copy of Laura Olympus Volume 2 by Rachel Smith. In one of my earlier wrap-ups for this year, I read Laura Olympus Volume 1 and I had such a good time. It's a Greek mythology retelling of the Hades and Persephone story, but it's set in contemporary times. It does a good job of focusing on the brother relationship and making it amicable instead of full of amnosity. And I really like the friendships that Persephone has around her. And it did focus, I felt more on the friendships than the romance, but maybe this one's gonna get a bit more heavy handed with the romance. Back to my Dutch order of books with covers that I like. I ordered the US paperback edition of Blackwater Sister by Zen Cho. And I read this sometime last year. I had a proof copy, so I read it for a review and it was free. Again, didn't mind buying myself a finished copy with a cover that I adore. And Blackwater Sister follows this young adult so she's in her 20s and she is living in Asia with her parents because she couldn't find a job in the US and they are having a bit of money troubles when she starts hearing the voice of her dead grandmother in her ear and it turns out her grandmother wants her to get revenge on someone who is trying to set up a hotel on a ground that belongs to the Blackwater sister goddess and before you know it the story spirals into one that's focusing on family relationships and dynamics has LGBT plus representation because our main character is lesbian and closeted is set in Asia and it's dealing with what it's like to live 
in Asia, experience that culture when you're not too connected to it, but you're also not living within the country where you can speak and understand the language. And then it's also got this whole mythology, gods and goddesses storyline going on with some gang crime thrown in and it is page turning and full of plot twists and it's absolutely fantastic. Knocked it out of the park. And I'm so happy that I've got this copy on my shelves. Then for Independent Bookshop Week, I was given a £100 gift card to spend during Indie Bookshop Week as part of a partnership with Books Are My Bag. And it was fantastic. I had such a great time book shopping and visiting different independent shops one Saturday. So thank you very much, Books Are My Bag, for doing that with me. And I'm going to show you some books throughout the haul that I got with the Indie Book Card. So one of the ones that I got was this graphic novel, Bloom, by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganchu. And this one has been on my TBR wishlist for a very, very long time. I know that it is a queer graphic novel. I know that it's got a blue monochrome color palette. And that is pretty much all that I know about it. So I'm going to dive in and just see if it's as great as everybody has been saying it is for a very, very long time. While also shopping, with that gift card. I got myself a finished copy of Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Joya Goffney. I read this one back in, I think it was May that I read this one and I had a very, very good time. This book grew on me and grew on me and now I think it is one of my young adult contemporary favorites. And it just, I keep thinking about it and I keep rehashing how much I loved it. I was sent a proof copy, so I wanted to get myself a finished copy and so I did and I love it because it's got some black characters on the cover. We love to see it. I won a giveaway earlier this year and it was a massive giveaway and it was that I will get a copy of every single book that Hot Key Books publishes this year. So you'll see some of those books in this haul and I'm not keeping every single book. I'm sharing some with friends but I'm keeping a few that interest me and one of those is Empress Crowned in Red by CNN Smart and this one is the sequel and the conclusion to Witch is Steeped in Gold which I actually have not read and do not own but I know that these are witchy fantasy books with Jamaican mythology inspiration behind them so I do want to give them a go I'll give it a fair shot and I just need to audiobook the first one. We'll see what happens. I'll just keep this one on my shelf for now. At some point I tripped and fell and slipped into the works. I don't know how that happened. I, I don't know how this book ended in my hands and I don't know how I hit the till, but I bought myself a copy of It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Tessa Bailey is a romance author I've just seen kicking off lately. Everyone seems to love her books and seems to have such a good time. In particular, Emma Tobias seemed to really, really love this one. And I trust her romance recommendations because she has not steered me wrong yet. So I'm gonna give Tessa Bailey a go. It Happened One Summer sounds cute. It sounds very rom-com-y. I don't really know what more I can tell you about it, but I will once I read it and give it a shot. It just seems really good. Back to books that I got with the Indie Bookshop gift card. So I got myself a copy of Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I am definitely gonna be reading some James Baldwin fiction works. And ever since I saw Mary from Mary Among Stories holding this copy of Giovanni's Room, I thought, that is the edition I want to get. And in Gay's the Word, they had one, so I just snapped it up. It's a nice small book, so I think it's gonna be a quick read. While I was there, I also picked up a copy of All About Love by Bell Hooks. And this is her nonfiction work that's all about love and different interpretations of love and new visions of love. And I've heard nothing but wonderful things about it. Before I went shopping with my indie book card, I saw that Hilary from Melted Books read this and loved it. And someone in church came up to me and gave me a personal recommendation to read this book. And then it was on the shelf in the bookshop. So it was almost as if it was fate for me to pick up this book and add it to my collection so I can read it. I love getting books from other people's unhauls. It's one of my favorite ways to like thrift and pick up free books. And so when I saw that someone was unhauling A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende, I went and took it from them and picked it up. I actually don't know too much about this particular one, but Isabel Allende writes historical fiction and I've enjoyed everything that I've read by her in the past. I think this is one of her newer releases, so it's, 
it's shiny and it's beautiful and I'm looking forward to it. More gift card. When I went to my local indie shop, I saw a copy of Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. Sorrow and Bliss is one of the books that was shortlisted on the Women's Prize and we know the winner, the wonderful Rufa Zeki, but I do want to go back and make time to read some of the books on the shortlist. And this is one that has been kicking off everywhere. I've just seen everyone reading and loving it. I don't even know too much of what it's about, but I assume it's got something to do with sorrow and bliss and those two emotions. So I'm gonna be reading this one and seeing what my own two cents will be. From the lesbian fiction section of Gaze the Word, I saw Concerning My Daughter by Kim Hai Jin and this one is a translated fiction work and it's all about a mother whose daughter is moving back in with her again and her daughter hasn't lived with her for a while but it turns out that her daughter has a girlfriend and she's very concerned about this, hence the title and I just think it looks very short, I've heard really good things about it and I wanted to give it a go myself. I picked up a book that I don't know too much about and that is Devotion by Hannah Kent. I've heard of Hannah Kent as an author and I've heard that her writing is really really good and she's been recommended left, right and centre for many different reasons so I just wanted to try one of her books and as I was using a gift card I thought why not pick up Devotion by her and see all about it and see what I think. So that's the reasoning behind this purchase. I was sent a review copy of The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filior, and this is a short story collection that I've heard a lot of very good things about. And as a church lady myself, I want to see if some of my secrets are being exposed. So this is about these ladies who go to church and is talking about feelings of desire and their sex lives and their romantic lives and things that you wouldn't think good old church ladies do, but they are doing. So it just sounds like it's gonna be really, really good. And of course, I've got some personal incentive to read this book as well. And we have another one of those. I bought it in the Netherlands because I wanted a certain cover for it book purchase and that is Know My Name by Chanel Miller and this is a memoir that is very sensitive and on a very important topic that I've seen a lot of people just say is absolutely brilliant and it's Chanel Miller who's talking about her experience with sexual assault and experience with her law case around sexual assault and I've just heard it's harrowing and moving and I do read memoirs myself so I have had it on my list of books to read for quite a while and I'm glad that I finally got a copy so I can get to it sooner. A graphic novel that I was sent for review is The Wash Day Diaries by Jamila Rouser and Robin Smith and I've already read this one, I just couldn't help myself, I had to get to it instantly and it's following these black women on their black wash day. By the time this video has gone up you'll have seen my wrap up and my thoughts of it so I'll link that down below if you'd like further details. But it's an absolutely stunning graphic novel and it hits it on the head with making it slice of life and low energy but also really gathering together the black hair experience and black friendship in a single graphic novel it's fantastic another gift card one okay so we got the gunkle here by Stephen Rowley and it's got such a bright summery cover and I know that Joy from Joyous Reads and also Hilary from Melted Books really liked this one and it just sounds like it's going to be funny but also incredibly heartwarming while being harrowing at the same time too. We love books that can bring you all the different emotions on the scale. So in this one we follow this family and the uncle who is gay is taking care of his nieces and nephews when something happens to their parents and he ends up being a guardian for his nieces and nephew and he didn't expect that but really he's just their gay uncle their gunkle and he doesn't know how to handle this level of responsibility so definitely sounds like one of my books that focuses on family that I'm really gonna have a good time with one of my work colleagues was unhauling books and she unhauled somebody loves you by Mona Arshi and also boyfriends by Michael Pedersen and I just thought I would give them both a go. I've seen this one around a lot on Instagram and in this one I've heard some very good things. I think Tasnim from Reads and Reveries on Instagram really really liked it so even though I don't know too much about these short little books I thought I would give them a fair try just because I've heard very many interesting things. Okay. Proceed. I got that I've already read because I wanted the US cover is Exit West by Hosin Hamid and when I read this book it was summertime in Australia and it was good vibes and I was sitting in the botanical gardens reading this book and looking after a baby. What a brilliant combination. Take me back. Anyway, 
Exit West is about this world where portals open, these doors that can open. We follow these two young people who meet in the brink of civil war and it's reaching their town and I think they're both Muslim and they fall in love and they just want to survive and suddenly these doors start appearing and they are portals to different countries and different places. You step through and you really don't know where you're going to be taken and I thought this was just a very quick read all in all but a very good one in terms of talking about refugee crisis and the refugee situation while also making it slightly magical and not too on the nose with the commentary and it was just a very good read. I really wanted to own a copy and add it to my collection because when I read it I was borrowing it from a friend to do so and now I've got my own one and it's beautiful and stunning and it's a really good book. Some review copies here. One of them is The Vacation by John Mars and the line that you can see on the cover is Sun Sea Sax and murder and that just sounds like a very good one. John Mars writes brilliant thrillers from what I've heard and I'm really looking forward to reading this. It could be a good fun summertime read with an edge of darkness to it. Oh we have Death on Gokumon Island by Seishi Yokomizo and I'm so excited for this one. The covers, I saw the cover and I was just like oh my goodness I really want to read this book and his books in English with their translation have some fantastic covers. Pushkin has knocked it out of the park and I'm hoping I'll read this first one and then want to read all the rest of his works. So in this one we follow a detective who goes to Gokumon Island because he's got some sad news about a murder to, to share with people who live on the island but when he gets to the island murders start happening one after the other and he is trying to solve them so it's a very isolated setting crime book and I love me a good Agatha Christie isolated setting murder mystery but I think it's time to branch out and I can't wait to see a translated fiction book do that kind of isolated setting murder mystery situation. I'm ready, I'm ready. More on hauls, we have Rebel of the Sand by Alwyn Hamilton and this is a desert fantasy book and it was very popular back in the day. I remember when everybody was reading this series and I just wanna read it now too because back then I didn't realize that I really like desert set fantasy books. The Dieva Bad trilogy was one that made me wake up and realize that I need some desert fantasy books in my life. So I'm gonna give this one a shot. And also Hannah was unhauling How to Train Your Dragon by Christina Cowell. And it was at a time where I was reading a lot of middle grade fantasy books. And I'm gonna to get to that time again at some point and I'm looking forward to reading this one. It's quite iconic and Christina Cowell has done so much, not only for her books and them being very big fan fantasy ones, but also just for literacy and giving children accessibility to books in the UK overall. So I'm just looking forward to finally reading one of her books. And as I love all of the films, I know the books are gonna be very, very different. I love all of the films. And so I wanted to give it a shot for quite a while. <laughs> I was sent a review copy of this young adult book that is gonna bring all of the drama and I am here for it. So that is Cuts Both Ways by Candice Brathwaite. And this just sounds so dramatic. We're following our main character and she falls in love with these brothers. And she's trying to choose between the brothers and one of the brothers is black like her and one of the brothers is white. And so <laughs> drama gone ensue because it's the ultimate love triangle. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it all unfolds. <laughs> I'm so ready for drama. Fictional drama is the only kind of drama I want to get behind, really. I think this is the last one I got with the gift card. You can get quite a lot of books for £100. So one of them I got was She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quinden. And this has been on my TBR wish list ever since it released. It's a young adult book. It's a female female romance. One of the girls is on the basketball team and the other girl is a cheerleader who is as mean as she is beautiful. And I think a romance is gonna start. I think it's gonna be enemies to lovers because they drive each other crazy. But if you give me a book that is set or has to do with basketball, I will read it. I love basketball, I used to play it, and so I'm always here for a good basketball book. And another graphic novel I was sent was M is for Monster, and that one is by Talia Dutton. And this one is a Frankenstein retelling. Do you know why I got it? Do you know why I got it? Because it's a Frankenstein retelling. I love a good Frankenstein retelling. And this one has to do with two sisters as well. So it's got that sibling relationship and it's got some Frankenstein commentary and I'm excited. It's also got a very unanimous green 
color palette which works so well for the Frankenstein story. Excitement! We're on to the last stack of books now. One of those is Leech by Hiron Ennis and this just sounded gothic and dark and spooky and as you can tell from my outfit I love something that is gothic and dark and spooky. So in this one we are set in a world where doctors are being replaced by AI who can do their work for them and never make a mistake. And they turn and it turns out that one of these doctors ends out dead and they go and investigate but it seems like there is a leech, a kind of virus that is happening at this abandoned estate and they're going to look into it and see what's going on. So we've got that creepy gothic mansion vibe in the middle of nowhere and a mysterious supernatural virus that is spreading in a sci-fi book. Wow, doesn't that sound fantastic? From an unhaul, I snagged a copy of The Monsters of Rookhaven by Padraig Kenny, and this one is one I saw that Hannah from Ladette M loved, and I've been loving middle grade, and I need to read more spooky middle grade, so I decided to give it a go. I think it's got gothic vibes, it deals with monsters, and that is all I know, and all I need to know. So next we're gonna cycle through some books that I got in my hotkey giveaway books for the last month and I don't really know what too many of these are about but I've decided to give them a go so we're just going to go very quickly. We've got The Forevers by Chris Whitaker, and I've heard that Chris Whitaker is a good author so I decided I was going to give it a try. We've got The Reluctant Vampire Queen by Joe Simmons and I'm always here for vampires even if they're reluctant vampires I'd be the least reluctant person to turn into a vampire. I would, I would say bite me! <laughs> I would love to be a vampire. So it's about this girl who is prom queen and she's one of the perfect people and she's planned out her whole future and her whole life when someone offers to make her a vampire queen as well, which is not exactly what she had planned. So she might be a bit reluctant, but maybe, maybe she's gonna take that offer. We've got Bad Things Happen Here by Rebecca Barrow and there is nothing else that I know about this other than it's a young adult thriller type of book. We have Why Is Nobody Laughing by Yasmin Rahman and this one is a middle grade book about a boy who is a stand-up comedian and his family are really relying on him and that's all I know but it sounded pretty good to me and I decided I was going to keep my copy of it. And then last but not least from that we have The Silver Chain by Gion Shabani and this one is a novel in verse that has to do with music and mental health and I am always happy to read a novel in verse so I decided I was gonna give this one a go. And those are all the hot key books. And we're just gonna end with a couple of review copies. So one of them is A Flash of Fireflies by Aisha Bushby. And this is a middle grade book that is all to do with OCD representation and family and mental health. And I've heard that it's very beautifully written and I'm gonna give it a go. I've really been liking middle grade lately. And speaking of middle grade, the other book I was sent was Orla and the Wild Hunt by Anna Houghton. This one is set in Ireland and we're following these children who go on an adventure. It has to do with shape-shifting darkness and a kidnapping and it just sounds like it's going to be a really nice time. And in the young adult vein we have The House of Shells by Afua Traor and this one is a young adult fantasy book that's inspired by Yoruba mythology and it's set in Nigeria and it just sounds like it's going to be full of black magic and lots and lots of fun. And then last but not least I went to a book launch for The Yoga Manifesto by Nadia Gilani and if you know anything about me you'll know that I am a big practitioner of yoga. I do yoga in terms of exercise rather than in terms of meditation. But yes, this sounds like a really good non-fiction book that talks about what yoga is to her and her own personal experience on her yoga journey. And I'm looking forward to reading it and seeing her experience because hearing her talk about it at the launch, it just sounded fantastic. And there you have it. These are all of the books that I've recently bought and received. I'm very excited to read them all. I have already read some of them, which is very good progress for my TBR, but there are definitely some additions there. Please let me know in the comment section down below what was the last book you have bought, received, acquired or borrowed. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more and don't forget to hit that notification bell to be updated every time I have a new video. And you know what they say, onwards and upwards. Excelsior!